Hello and welcome to another Excel Tips video. I am Sumit Bansal and in this video, I am going to show you how to connect one slicer to multiple pivot tables in Excel. Now there are two scenarios I am going to cover. In scenario one, I would have one data set and then you can create two different pivot tables with the same data set. Now, because these pivot tables have been created with the same data set, they share a pivot cache. Now, if I create a slicer with let's say pivot table one, and I want this slicer to also control pivot table two, it's pretty easy because these pivot tables share the same pivot cache. In scenario two, however, things are a little difficult. I have two separate data sources. So I have data one and data two. And now I can create a pivot table with data one and another pivot table with data two. But as of now, these data sets are completely different. These pivot tables do not share anything in common. So now if I create a slicer for pivot table one and then try and connect it to pivot table two, I will not be able to do this because there is no common link. So for this to work, I would have to somehow create a link between the two data sets. So in this case, I would show you how to use Power Pivot to create this relationship between two data sets so that I can have a slicer that can control multiple pivot tables. So let's see these examples in action. So here I have this sales transaction data and I'm going to create two pivot tables using the same data and then connect these two pivot tables so that they can be controlled with the same slicer. So to create a pivot table, I would select any cell in this data, then go to the insert tab and then click on pivot table. You can also use the keyboard shortcut Alt NVT. And here in this dialog box, I am going to choose new worksheet because I want my pivot table to be in a new worksheet. And now when I click OK, it inserts this pivot table here. And let's make this pivot table. Let's say I want the details of uh, revenue by the salesperson name. So I have this pivot table here. Now let's create another pivot table using the same data set. So you can follow the same steps. You can come to this data set and then go to insert and then insert a pivot table, or you can just copy this pivot table and then paste anywhere. Now in this case, I'm going to paste it right here on this sheet. In most cases, this is not a good idea. It's always a good idea to have these pivot tables in different sheets because pivot tables can expand and contract. But if for just for this video, I'm going to keep it in the same sheet. Now here, when you copy paste, it actually uses the same data source and the same pivot cache. So these two pivot tables are actually using the same pivot cache and data source. Now in this case, let's change this pivot table a little. So I would make this by let's say category and revenue. Now I have these two pivot tables and I want to create a slicer that can control both of these. So let's first insert a slicer. So I'm going to select any cell here in this pivot table, go to the pivot table analyze tab. And here I have this option of insert slicer. So when I click on it, it asks me what slicer do I want to insert. And in this case, let's say I want to insert based on category. So it shows me this slicer where I have these categories, which is clothing, electronics and furniture. Now, as of now, let's put the slicer here. So as of now, if I click on clothing, you'll see that it only controls this pivot table. It doesn't make any changes to the second pivot table here. So let me zoom this a little. Similarly, if I choose any option, so electronics, furniture, it is only making changes in the first pivot table. And the reason for this is because I made this slicer while I had a cell selected in pivot table one, which is on the left. And this pivot table, the second one is not connected to the slicer, but because they share the same data source, it is very easy to connect the pivot table to this slicer. I would come to the slicer, right click, then go to report connections. When you click on report, uh, report connections, you will see that multiple pivot tables are listed here, which is an indication that these pivot tables either have a connection or they share the same data source, the same pivot cache. In this case, I would just check this option, click OK, and that's it. I have now both of these pivot tables being controlled by the same slicer. If I click on electronics, you can see this updates as well as this pivot table updates. So if you want to select multiple options in the slicer, you can hold the control key and select multiple options and that would also work. So you can see both of these pivot tables are now controlled with the same slicer. Now, as I said, this is very easy. We just had to create a report connection and and connect these two pivot tables. But what if we have two different data sources? So let me show you that as well. So here I have two different data sources. I have two tabs, data one and data two. In data one, I have sales transactions records where I have the date, region, category, and so on. And I have the salesperson column. And in data two, I have the salesperson details along with more details about that person, including the reporting manager, hiring date, years of experience, and base salary. 
Now for this technique to work, I need to have some commonality between these two tables. There should be one or two ways for me to connect these two tables. In this example, that is going to be the salesperson name. So in data two, I have these names here. And also it is very important that these names should repeat only once. If they repeat multiple times, then I would not be able to use this technique. So I have these salesperson's name that repeat only once. And in data one, I have these transaction records that also includes the salesperson name. So if I want to now combine these two data tables, there is a way for me to do it. Now, if I ask you to do it with uh, using a formula, you can do that using a VLOOKUP or a XLOOKUP formula. But in this case, we are going to use uh, a, a pivot power pivot technique by using data models. So now let's insert the pivot table for the first data set. So I'm going to select any cell in this data set, go to the insert tab and then click on pivot table. Now in the pivot table dialog box, you have to make sure that you check this option that says add this data to the data model. And we are doing this because then we will be able to create a relationship between these two tables. So now I check this, I want to insert this in a new worksheet. So that is already checked. Now I, when I click OK, it is going to insert the pivot table in a new sheet. And let's create this. So let's say I am creating salesperson and revenue. So I have this pivot table. Now let's also create this pivot table for second data. So I would again select any cell here, go to the insert tab, click on pivot table. Again, check this option, add this data to the data model. And in this case, instead of inserting it in a new worksheet, let's insert it in the existing worksheet. As I said, it is not a good idea to do it in most cases, but for this example, I'm going to just have this data in the same sheet. So it's easier for me to show you side by side. And in this table, I would uh, select, let's say manager. But now let's say I want to see what is the sales by manager. I cannot get it because the sales data is not there in table two. If I go to this data, you can see there is no sales data for managers, but there is sales data for each salesperson and that salesperson reports to the manager. So if I'm able to somehow connect these two tables, I would be able to get that data and then also have a slicer that can control both of these pivot tables. So to do that, I'm going to go to power pivot. So here I have this power pivot option and here I would click on manage. And because when I was creating the pivot table, I already chose the option, add this data to data model. My data is already here in the power pivot data model. So you can see table one and table two. Now I need to somehow connect these two tables. So I would go to this option called diagram view so that I can do it in a very visual way. And I have these two tables. Now, as I mentioned, there is a key between these two tables and that key is the salesperson, which is common in both of these tables. So I would just select this and connect this table here. And when I do that, you'll see that it now connects these two. Now, one important thing to note here is the way it is being connected. You can see here, it says one, which means that this is a one to many relationship. Why? Because there is one here at the beginning and there is an asterisk here, which represents many. Now, one to many relationship means that in table two, the, the name of the salesperson is only repeated once. And in table one, the name of the salesperson is repeated multiple times. So this is a one to many relationship. And you can also see here in this part, it shows you the flow. So it tells you that it is a one to many relationship where it is connecting table two salesperson column with the column in table one. So now once this is done, I can close this. And now when I, when I come back to my pivot table fields here, you will see that I have this option of all. And when I click on all, you'll see it shows me both of these tables. And now when I want to get the revenue data for manager, in this case, in the second pivot table, I can just come here and click on revenue. And when I do that, you can see now it shows me the revenue. Now, this is the great thing in table two in data two, there was no revenue details for each reporting manager, but because we have connected these two tables, I now have the data that I can now uh, fetch from table one. So I'm able to get the revenue data for each manager because I already have connected salesperson to the reporting manager from table one. Now this is okay, but I want to control both of the, uh, both of these pivot tables with one slicer. So let's insert the slicer. So I would select any cell here in this pivot table, then go to pivot table, analyze tab and click on insert slicer. And in this case, again, go with category. So it inserts these categories, but as of now, you would notice that if I make any changes in the category, it only controls pivot table one, which is on the left. So you can see this pivot table that has the managers is not changing. And the reason for this is while we have connected the data sources in the backend, we still need to connect the slicer 
to the second pivot table. And again, now this is the same process we did earlier. I would right click, then go to report, uh, report connections. And within it now, it shows pivot table two. And the reason it shows here is because in the backend in Power Pivot, I have already connected these two data sources. So now when I click OK, now these data sources are connected. And when I make changes in in the slicer, you'll see both of these pivot tables will now be controlled by the same slicer. So these are two ways you can connect one slicer to multiple pivot tables. If you are using the same data source, which means that pivot tables are sharing the same pivot cache, it is very easy. You can just go to report connection and use the slicer settings to just check and have both the pivot tables connected. And if you're using two different data sources, then you can use Power Pivot data model to create a relationship and then use slicer report connection to connect these pivot tables. That's it in this video. I hope you found this useful. Also, if you're liking these videos, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and click on the bell icon so that you never miss out on any new Excel tips video I come up with. Thank you and have a nice day.